And with MPR and stylized rendering still being very classic and relevant to date, stylized shading and rendering are becoming very popular and this can be seen across various games and animations. And today, we're taking a look at stylized shaders. This is made available by DragonX and for anyone who would like to get this, you can simply go over to the link in the description and check it. The stylized shaders is a powerful tool which has been designed to give you that 2D look when developing your characters and preparing them for rendering. This currently offers 18 unique procedural shaders which have distinct looks and you can customize them to your liking. If you're thinking about rendering with Cycles or Eevee, this is also totally fine. And how this works is very simple. So Blender simply open right here. All you need to do is go over to Edit, go over to Preference and go over to Add-on and install the add-on. Now, once you install the add-on, you need to hit on the bugger menu and click on save. And once you save it, you would notice that you have literally nothing here except for the fact that once you tap in on the keyboard, you would see that we have SS, which is the stylized shaders. I'm going to select the box which you have here and subdivide that by five, right click, make that an auto smooth or simply hit shade smooth. And I'm also going to go ahead and put in a simple plane. Tap Z on the keyboard and switch this to rendering. So if you have the object selected, you can assign any shader of choice. So in this case, if we'd like to play with the mouse, we can select the mouse and click on assign. And this is automatically going to assign the shader to the selected object. You can make changes to this if you want. And you'd also notice that this also reacts to light. So we can move this around then you can see all of that. And you can also choose to throw some outline. So let's say you like to have some outline on this. Of course you can. You can throw in that outline and you see how cool this is. If you're thinking about getting the whole wall thing, the developer is currently working on some extra world settings. So just in case you're thinking about that, you can. But at this point, if you click on set world, this simply sets your world to pure white. So you can actually go ahead and explore different shaders that is currently available here. So you can throw in the comic one, click on apply, and you can also see what that looks like. Let's drag this light down so you can see the reaction. And of course you can see some stuff there. We can go to the shader and we can make some changes if we want. You can also play with some other ones like the hashings as well. You can add that. And if you're thinking about applying these alongside a texture that you have before, Yes, you can. So you can actually go ahead and apply, say for example, the multiverse. So you can apply the multiverse alongside a pre-existing texture that you have with your model. So how you do that is very simple. And for us to actually explain that, we're simply going to load in a Spider-Man model that we've downloaded off Sketchfab and we're going to assign some textures to this. And with this here, what we're going to do is just get rid of some things. So I'm just going to get rid of the rigs because we don't want those rigs. We don't want the camera. We don't want the plane. We don't want the point light that this comes with. And of course, we don't want the default cube. So what we want is a simple plane. And I'm just going to keep that as it is. Next thing which we're going to do is make sure that we have the object selected. And if we tap Z and switch over to rendering, you'll notice we don't have textures on this. So I'm going to tap in on the keyboard because we would like to apply, you know, a new texture to this, which is the multiverse. And if we assign this, it comes to the multiverse shader, but you notice we don't have our original texture. So to apply that original texture, what we need to do is simple. I'm dragging out a new panel. We'll go over here and switch this to shader editor. Now within the shader editor, I'm just going to go ahead and unlink that. And what we need to do is to drag out and I will throw in a principal BSDF. So with this principal BSDF right here, we're going to load in the textures that the model actually came with. So I'm dragging out the texture in. So we have this texture, which has to do with the normal. So we're just going to go ahead and connect those. And we're going to throw in the color one and connect that as well. So real quick, you'd notice that we have it. Let's subdivide this just to make it look a bit better. And I'm going to right click and set this to shade smooth. The next thing which we're going to do is just go ahead and drag this out and I'm going to type in the word mix. So we're going to mix the shaders together. I'm loading up the first BSDF right here and I'm also going to load this other one right on top. So once we get that, these two are going to mix with a fraction of 0.5. So what this means is if we push this all the way to this point, we get all of what the multiverse shader has and if we move this all the way to this point we get what we have here so the sweet spot is definitely going to be 0.5 and we can keep it simple and you can see what we have and if you're wondering can we throw outlines on this of course we can so we can go over to the outline section and click on outline and we definitely have an outline right here so you can now proceed to select that and move it around and you'll be able to see that this also reacts to light some other cool things that you can do with this includes Having this object selected, go over to where you have the shader 
and make some changes. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this all the way out and you can make some changes right here. So if you don't get to find the changes that you're looking for from here, right, right here, you can select the multiverse here. You notice that the parameters now show up. So from this section, we can now make some changes. So if we like to make that blue, purple, maybe green, you can make all of those changes and get the most out of it. There's also a very cool thing that the multiverse comes with, which is animate. So at this point, if I press the playback button, you'd notice it has a little bit of that animation going on. We can drag that down to reduce how much of the animation happens. And I think this doesn't really apply to all of them. So for example, if I go to the glitter, I don't think the glitter one has it. I'm just going to go ahead and apply that so that we can take a look at that. Yeah, I don't think the glitter one has it. So the glitter one doesn't have it. I don't think the stone one has it as well. I think mostly the one that really has it is the multiverse one. So if you switch over to the multiverse, this has that tiny animation thing, which you might definitely love, especially if you're creating an animated Spider-Man jumping from one building to another, just like the one we have right here. So if you're looking for stylized shaders, which you can use to create some very interesting animated shots like this one, or like the ones which you saw within the intro of the video, then you can go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can check this out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.